Welcome to the Accelerate Church weekly broadcast. We are so glad you tuned in and we believe you'll be strengthened and encouraged as Pastor Jeremy File continues his sermon series on the basis of the word. Get a notebook, get a pen, get your Bible and be ready to receive right now as we tune in to this service already in progress. When you step out on the word of God, you're stepping out on something that's eternal in its DNA, in its makeup. So when God says to do something and you have God's word on it and you step out to do that, this is not uh, just you doing something. This is God at work. I think of Philippians chapter two, where it says, you have obeyed not only in my presence, but much more in my absence. I think it's verse 12 that says that. Therefore, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you. Isn't that a powerful truth? When you obey God, you step out on God's word, what's happening is this, God is at work. (laughs) See, it's not you working, it's God putting in the work. And the word does the heavy lifting. You don't have to worry about the heavy things in life. The word, it's like a snowplow, just go right in front of you and just make your path easy. All you gotta do is stick with the word. I don't know why Christians keep making life so convoluted and difficult. They make Jesus like he's hard to follow. He's easy. He's given us his word. Men gave their life, shed their blood, were hung up by piano strings. So we would have this and we use it as a coaster. Come on now, life is in this word. And you're going to have to stir yourself this morning to receive from it. See, the problem's not on God's end, it's on our end. Wow, God's word never goes out of trend or style. Trends always end. That's why that word is in trend, right? Fads always fade, but God's word stays eternal. (laughs) Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank God for the word. word. We looked at this. The world was created by the word. Yeah. And it's funny because the word is then the parent force of the universe. The word, according to John 17, 17, Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. So this tells us a very valuable piece of information. Yes, I refer to this scripture a lot because when I study on my own, I keep being drawn back to this. You got to understand people don't know what the truth is. Nothing's new. In Jesus' day, he was drugged before Pilate. One of the most powerful men on the planet at the time. And he looked at the truth because Jesus said he was the truth. And Pilate said, what is truth? There's a lot of people that that's the way they live now. What is truth? You know why it's so convoluted and people don't know? I'll tell you why. Because we take someone's opinion on social media that's posted as truth. You just have to know this. Just because it got posted, just because somebody said it somewhere, and just because maybe thousands or millions reposted it doesn't make it true. One thing that makes it true is if it's based on the Word. See, on the basis of the Word, that's where you find the truth. Jesus said in John 8 that if you're my disciple, you'll continue in my Word. And the Word will what? It actually says that if you continue my word, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Yeah, I kind of set you up to fail on that one, by the way, I led you into that. But the point is this, if you know the word, then you know the truth. And when you know the truth, now you know how to be free. Why do you think we had the dark ages when man didn't have copies of the Bible for himself? They didn't have the light entering them, so therefore we enter the dark ages or it was a very actually bad time in history. Yet when the word started getting out, praise God, the truth started spreading, light started spreading. You look at the founding of this country and how people were persecuted in Holland for their Christian faith. And they said, you know what? Let's make a pact. Let's, let's go to the new world and let's establish the Christian faith in the new world. And the Mayflower compact starts out with them saying this, For the furtherance of Christianity, we sell out here. Praise God. People don't even know that. This was a Christian nation. Were the men perfect? No. I don't know why people automatically go to that. Well, they they had some stuff that weren't good. Yeah, you got some stuff that's not good. But you got to still follow the truth and get those things corrected, right? But thank God for some founders that were smart and founded this country on God's holy word. 
I'll talk more about that in this series, Lord willing. But I want you to think about this, that the world was made by the word. Yet we live in a world that's confused because we make opinions on the level of truth. It's not. The word is truth. Say it with me. The word is truth. The word is truth. Say it one more time. The word is truth. The word is truth. Yeah, it's the word that's truth. That's what Jesus said. So if you disagree with that, you disagree with the master, right? <laughs> you just got to know this. For anything to be the truth, it's not because it sounds legit. It's because it's found in the Bible. There's a lot of things that sound legit that are error. There's a lot of reasonings that you can go through as a human and it doesn't equate to truth. God's word is truth. I'll just tell you like this. If it's not Bible, it's not truth. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a piece of my mind. Well, that don't mean it's based on the truth. And you don't have too many more pieces to keep giving out like that. Now, the good thing about the truth is as long shelf life and, and, and there's no end to it. I'm telling you, it just keeps going on and on. You can give the truth at any time and the truth is going to stay the truth. And it never changes. It's absolute. Praise God. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says the grass withers. Here we are in springtime and the grass is getting green. If you put some water on it, I like that. But you know what? If you keep blinking long enough, it's going to wither again. Are you shocked by that? No, no. no, why? Grass withers. Flowers, I like this time of year. Flowers start coming up. Flowers are beautiful. Man, that's wonderful. But guess what? The flower fades. But the word of our God stands forever. Glory to God. I said the word of our God stands forever. You see, there's nothing temporary about the word of God. So when you're living your life on the basis of the word, you're not living on a temporary power, you're living on an eternal power. Accelerate Church has opened its doors to a second location located at 1300 East Central Avenue in Amarillo. The word of God is thundering forth every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. from seasoned ministers here at Accelerate. If you live in the area, we invite you to join us for power-packed services each week and bring the entire family. We have something for the little ones too. God is building strong families and we would love for your family to join us. So why don't we see more powerful Christians? And I'm going to talk about this today. It's because many don't give the word a place in their heart. They'll give it head knowledge. They'll give it a you know, a Texas howdy with the cowboy hat, bend the cowboy hat down. Yeah, I like the word. That doesn't mean it actually is getting rooted in your heart. Are, are you hearing me? Therefore, because people don't give the word a place in their heart, they become limited in what they receive from God, though this is the parent force of the universe. Go to Luke chapter 8, shout it with me. Thank God for the word. Luke chapter 8, we're going to spend most of the rest of the day in Luke 8 today. Luke chapter 8 and verse 4. And when a great multitude had gathered, they had come to Jesus from every city. He spoke by a parable. He said, a sower went out to sow his seed. Luke 8, 5 is where I'm reading. As he sowed, some fell by the wayside and it was trampled down. And the birds of the air devoured it. Some, verse 6 says, fell on rock. And as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Verse 7 of Luke 8 says, and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Wow, pretty descriptive, isn't it? Jesus said in Luke 8, 8, but others fell on good ground. Everybody say good ground. Good ground. Go ahead and say it by faith. That's me. Now, there's going to, it's going to require something for you to actually have good ground inside you. But your heart is the ground here. Others fell on good ground. It sprang up. It yielded a crop a hundredfold. Now, a lot of people, they say, oh, that's a hundred times whatever was, was uh, planted. No, no, no. Here's what you need to start defining a hundredfold as. Maximum return. You see, a lot of people settle for minimal return on the word of God that they've heard. What you need to start shooting for is maximum return. Everybody say maximum return. maximum return. 
Let me just tell you this. The word of God is so powerful. If it created this universe, what do you think it'll do once it gets rooted in your heart? Oh, now it's going to start producing things you could not do on your own. You never would be able to do it, but the word is at work on the inside of you. Say it. God's word word is working working in me me. right now. now. Glory to God. Do you believe that? Yeah. So Jesus tells this parable. He said it yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried. So it's like he yelled, lifted up his voice and said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, anytime you see that statement, that lets you know something. Not everyone that hears these words are actually going to hear what's being said. And I think about that every time, uh, you know, I prepare a sermon. My pastor taught me proper planning prevents poor performance. So I always prepare, but I'm always open to whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do, right? But I always prepare and over-prepare. I've got more prepared than I'll get to, and I know it. The people had to put the scriptures in today in the computer. They know it already, but they do it with a smile on their face anyway, I believe. I wasn't here to watch them, but I believe they do it because I'm preaching with a smile on my face knowing I'm not going to preach it all today. Somebody told me, they said, man, you like to preach everything. I said, that's all right, cover to cover. Index to maps and back. Genesis to Revelation and everything between, right? We don't have enough of the word on the inside of us. This is the parent force of the universe and it has a maximum return that I'm shooting for. And I just know this. I found this out. My attention during the time when the word's being preached is the most valuable time of my entire life. In fact, you're going to be able to look back on your whole life and when you take your last breath, I believe this, when you, especially when you see God as he is, you're going to wish that in these moments you had set down your social media, you had stopped texting, stopped making your grocery list, and had actually given God's word a priority in your life. I know many in here are, but I'm saying this. There are people that they never come to church. They don't get it. They don't get what church is about. Here's the entire point of everything today is that you get a word from God and you build your life on it and your whole life changes. The only reason I am breathing on this planet is to get people ready for heaven, for the return of the king, and to build their life on the word. That's it, man. I mean, you can try to slice this any way you want. Talk about, well, my feelings are hurt, or I don't like this, I don't like the way you do this. Well, we can talk about all that all you want, but I'm just going to tell you this. you got to get ready. Jesus is coming. you got to live your life on the word. If you want to see God results, you got to get the word on the inside of you. Well, He said, he that has ears, let him hear in Luke 8, 8. Look what happened in verse 9. Then his disciples asked him and they said, what does this parable mean? I'm glad they asked that question. Otherwise, we just read that and been like, okay. Sower was sowing some seed and that's what happens. I'll remember that next time I'm, you know, making my garden. I won't throw it on the rock because I want it to have some soil to go down into, right? I mean, you could take that and garden real well. But he wasn't talking about gardening. And the disciples were picking up, well, what does this mean? Jesus said in verse 10, Luke 8, aren't you thankful for the word? He said, to you it's been given to know the mysteries, that's the secrets of the kingdom of God. But to the rest it's given in parables. That, and all of a sudden he starts quoting the Bible. Seeing they may not see. Hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is what? What is the seed? Now, right off the bat, that gives you a whole different perspective of what he's saying. He's not talking about gardening at all. He's talking about the word of God. And you need to notate this. The word of God works like seed. The word of God works like seed. You know, a seed must be planted. My wife right now is is, uh, excited about a garden. And so we're going to have some ground tilled up. Because I found out if I just toss the seed out there, nothing happens. Say, how do you know that? I've done it before. (laughs) And if you do it, you get the same result I got. Nothing. Now, this is interesting. We're all responsible for the soil of our heart. And what we have heard all week has a lot to do with how effective the word is at getting planted on the inside of our heart. Now, if you come in here with a hard heart towards God, you're kind of wasting your time in church. Yeah. Somebody said, what? I didn't expect you to say that. Well, That's what's happening if you have a hard heart or you've been listening to the wrong voices all week. You can't receive from God and receive from the devil at the same time. Well, I guess you can, but those weeds are going to choke out the word. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, so if we're going to plant a garden, what are we going to do? Just go out there and throw some seed and let's see. Why isn't it growing? It's been 10 minutes. That's, why you, that's the Christian version of it, right? Come on, the microwave generation. I want this. Come on, come on. You got to do some prep. See, before you ever come to church, you should have a prayer life of your own. You should have a worship life of your own before the band strikes it up. You should have some Bible study of your own so that it's not just what the preacher says that you live by. You got to live by the word of God. I'm going to have a fresh word here for you when you show up, I promise you. But you need to be living fresh every day with a fresh manna from heaven and practice living this way. Are you following me today? That way, when you come here, you're really primed to receive. And then the word that comes forth here is planted down deep because you've got a soil that's prepared. Well, we're going to plant a garden, okay? I'm just going to go ahead and minute right here in front of you. This year, we're planting a garden. Tilling the ground tomorrow, literally. Because we know if we're going to plant seeds and we want them to grow, it's got to be on soft ground. So you got to keep a tender heart towards God and see, having your own prayer life, your own study time, your own walk with God, that's what keeps your heart so tender. Right? And God has anointed me to plant some seed of God's word in your heart so that now you get even deeper revelation and more to study. There's so much to God. It's so amazing. The very first time we came uh, to check out Accelerate, um, I believe my husband came with me that very first time. Um, and I knew that that's what I wanted. I knew that's what I knew that that's where I was called. Um, so me and the kids continue to come back um, every Sunday and every Wednesday. I remember women were thinking that I was a single mom because my husband wasn't there, but I remained faithful and I kept coming. I would say at that point, our marriage was rocky. Um, I know that had we not stopped or started coming to church, I wouldn't be married today. That was something that I didn't ask him and wake him up every morning and say, you coming this time? Or, you know, Wednesday, you coming today? I just kept coming and I'll say, hey, we're going to church, see you later. And like I said, I remained faithful. I prayed for him and it was like this one empty seat, like one day he's gonna fill this seat. <laughs> so that morning was just like our normal chaotic Sunday morning, getting ready to go. Um, I was in the kitchen, you know, getting the kids breakfast and stuff ready and walked back into my room where my husband was normally still asleep and he was up putting on a button up shirt and I remember him just, oh, sorry. <laughs> I remember him buttoning his shirt up that morning and I knew he wasn't going to the gym because he was wearing a button up shirt. So I was like, well, where are you going? And he said, I'm coming with you to church. So I said, okay. And then I walked out, I was like, praise the Lord, he's coming. <laughs> you know, after my husband came to church with me, um, after those months, I was, I think we were at home after church, and I said, well, what caused you to come, like, with us to church? And he said, honestly, I've seen a change in you, and I wanted what you have. I would say right around that time, um, I thought my marriage was over. And that statement alone was confirmation that it's not. And for him to see that change in me, because I kept showing up, now he keeps showing up. And my kids keep showing up. And now we have his little brother. I would say, like, my personal little motto for anything is keep showing up. And I continually showed up. I didn't care that people thought I was a single mom or that I didn't have a husband at home. but. One thing I would not do, Hold on. Um, don't nag them, just pray for them and they'll show up. And that's, that's another thing too, it, you showing up and being faithful is going to change the trajectory of everyone behind you and everyone after you because one little thing that I had in my mind to remain determined and to keep showing up, it changed my family. It brought me and my husband closer together. It has really strengthened our family. Like I said, we have custody of his little brother now. So now we're changing his trajectory and those after him. We have custody of my stepdaughter. We're changing the trajectory of her life. So you remaining faithful and diligent 
is it going to affect more than just you? Did you know there's no one that walked the planet that walked with him so close that they figured out everything there is about God? But there are people that walked the planet, such as Enoch, who walked with God for 300 years and it pleased God so much he said, come on up here with me. Praise God. We ought to be like that, walking with God. Yes. That soft heart, Lord, what do you want to speak today? I'm here to listen. Some people are so busy, they never take time to even say that to God once during the day. All right. We're going we're gonna to till up the ground because we realize a seed has to be planted in ground that's been tilled. Then we have to give it some time. We have to give it some water, get some sunshine on it. And guess what? I'm expecting to see some things grow out. I already got drugged to the store to look at the, not drug, I, I went voluntarily, sorry. <laughs> to buy some seeds and she's got all kinds of packages of seeds that we're going to plant. And now, you know, I really wasn't interested in that part. I don't know why, but she said, look at all these seeds, look at it. And I said, yeah, look, I got to push the baby, you know. And I come back about five minutes later, she's still down there on her knees almost looking for all these seeds. I'm looking for this. And her mama call. Did you find any black eyed peas seeds yet? You got some black eyed peas? You're going to grow some black eyed peas? They're good. I'm counting on them black eyed peas. Let me tell you, I keep hearing about it on the phone, you know. She didn't know I'm listening. I'm sitting there like, hmm, black eyed peas. It'd be good with some Cholula on it. Mm mm. All right. If you want to see some corn, what kind of seed do you put in the ground? Corn. No, watermelon. <laughs> but see, Christians, this is how they act. They want to act a fool and plant some kind of weird seed out here, but still have the harvest of God's blessing in their life. It ain't going to work. You got to plant the right seed to get the right harvest. Wow. But here's something I want you to catch. Our garden will work for us if we do those things I talked about. Till the ground, put the seed in the ground, right? If we do all those things, water it, get it in sunshine. Come on, sun, shine on it. Praise God. But did you know that'll work for anybody that will do those steps? And I want you to notate this. God's word works for everyone that works it. God's word works for everyone that works it. Everyone that will allow the word of God to take root in their heart. The word will work. Yes. Verse 12, Jesus says, Here, here's the parable. Y'all ready for this? Yes, Luke 8, verse 12. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Now notice, your hearing is super important to God's word working. Now we're talking to you about the basis of the word. See, you can acknowledge yeah, it's on the basis of the word. I've got all these covenant rights. I've got healing. I've got prosperity. I've got, you know, salvation from sin, salvation from myself, salvation from hell. Praise God. Those are things to be excited about. But until you decide to hear it, you're not going to get the revelation of it. But I find it interesting that wayside soil hears the word. But then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts. That's why during this time is, is I'm telling you prime time for you to be distracted and not receive the word. What I was saying earlier, when you get to the end of life and you see Jesus as he's, you're going to start realizing those moments like a Sunday morning, like this moment you're in right now are the most highest value moments of your whole life. See, people don't think that way. They think it's when they're with family or friends. And I understand that's wonderful. I love all those memories. But let me tell you, there's nothing like sitting in a service and hearing God speak directly to your heart and sitting there and being like, oh, I'll never be the same after this in Jesus' name. I've been there several times where I'm like, whoa. I mean, like on the inside, fireworks are going off because God is just speaking to me. I'm like, whoa, praise the Lord. And I mean, I'll ride for weeks on that. That's why I'll go to great efforts to go sit in my pastor's meetings and not just watch online. I've, I've, I've just watched myself. When I just stream his conferences, I get maybe an eighth, if that, of what I get when I'm there in person. Not to mention when I'm there in person, he'll say, get up here and let me lay hands on you. I get an impartation. I don't get that other than him stretching out towards, you know, it's just not the same. Now, thank God for all of you that are streaming and listening by radio, because that's a, a way that we can reach you today because you couldn't be in the building. But let me just say, there's nothing like being here. 
And that's nothing that people don't understand about church. There's nothing like having distraction-free time where you can just zone in on what God is saying. See, people that have told me, well, I wish the kids were in here. I don't, because it would distract you from receiving. If my own children were in here, it would distract me from preaching so on point. I mean, I have all my mature children in here, but the younger ones I'm talking about, you know, if Cola's up here running around, throwing the ball at me, I want to throw it back. I'm not going to be preaching as effective, right? So we say, go back in the nursery and we'll teach you the word of God. And yeah, you can throw the ball a little bit. Just don't hit anybody with it, right? I noticed uh, Jace, uh, you know, he, uh, Troy and Chrissy's son, he's just a couple months older. He's pretty good throwing the ball too. He was up here last night. He chunking that ball at me too. I said, man, oh man, you and calling it together, we'll have us a good team throwing the ball around. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They're over serving at North today, by the way, if you wonder where they're at. I saw them over there. Praise God. But the point of having children's ministry, the point of having nursery, the point of all this, having ushers to keep order, is so that you can hear the word distraction free. We got to hear. But when the devil comes, what's going to happen? Can he take that word out of your heart? Or are you absolute? No, no, no. I don't care how I feel. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what people say about me. God's word is what I'm leaning on. God's word is what I'm building my life on. God's word is the report that I believe. I don't care what report comes in. I believe this report. That's a person that hears the word and it's not wayside ground. It's wayside lets the devil steal it. You can cut this any way you want, but you're living in one of the most dangerous times in church history. And I'm not talking about from you being martyred. People are being martyred, by the way, already all across the planet. I'm not talking about that. There's something more dangerous than that. I mean, man takes this life from you. If you're serving God to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Well, they, they're sending you to the king early. I mean, come on. It's really not that bad. Right? Now, people don't like it when you talk this way. But with long life, he's promised you long life. You don't have to do that. God's looking for more people to live for him than die for him right now. But here's the point. If the enemy can steal the word, then you don't base your life on that. So then you're living not on the basis of the word, but on opinion. And that's a good way to experience heartache after heartache after heartache. Jumping in, and while we hate to conclude it right here, we've got to pause and continue this next time on the broadcast. If you'd like to fill in the gaps and hear more from Pastor Jeremy, go online now to our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. There you'll find the Sermons tab, and you can click on and see all of the series Pastor Jeremy has preached and hear this one in its entirety. Again, we're thankful you've tuned in. Where are you tuning in from? We'd love to hear from you. Email us at info at accelerate.church.cc so you can tell us where you're watching. And if you're in the Amarillo area, we'd love to have you in service in person. Join us any Wednesday at 7 p.m. or Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Again, thanks for tuning in.